Hey man, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the old office here in Champaign, Illinois. I haven't made a video in quite a while, uh, but I'm fixing that today. Been for a couple reasons. Probably the number one reason I haven't made a video in a while is that honestly, I was pretty sick of listening to myself. And I, you know, I think I, surely everybody has this a little bit. You know, you go through periods where you, you're down on yourself or maybe not even down on yourself, but you don't, you think about what other people are saying or whatever, right? Are we all like that some? You try not to be because you can't live like that. But um, I just was sick of hearing myself speak and, and I figured you had to be a little bit sick of it too. Uh, but I've also been extremely busy with the online clinic and last but not least, I, I, I've been busy because I did accept a new coaching position. Now this is also one of the reasons why I hadn't made a video in a while. I, I just want to lay low. My name was in the news and, and I, it, uh, it's just a crappy feeling for me. I, just, I, don't, I don't like it. I don't like being in the news really, um, which I guess maybe surprise you a little bit since I make these videos. But see, when I make these videos, I'm in control of the content. I get to say what I want to say. And when it's the news, I'm not in control there. Um, so anyway, I was not looking for another coaching job, not a head job. I wanted really badly wanted to be an assistant if I could find the right situation. Um, but the number one thing that I was looking for was where am I going to send my son? I say my son because he's going to be in high school first. He's about to be a freshman next year. But really all my kids, where do I want them to go to high school? And you know, so much has gone into that decision. My wife and I really wanted them at a private school, but the private school in town, the Christian school in town, didn't have football or wrestling, and my son's a wrestler. i got to have wrestling. Um, and honestly, I've been a little down on public schools lately. You know, I don't need to get into it, but I, I, when, just when it comes to my own personal views on policy and such, I've been bummed out by the, by the public schools. I feel like um, I feel like we've lost the ability to tell people no. And it bothers me some. Now some of my friends who uh, are politically opposite of me, even on my staff at Central, they've really helped me kind of understand the other side and the other point of view. And I feel like I'm much more sensitive to, the, uh, to people who have differing views on my, than, than I do and why you could, should give kids a million chances. And I feel like I've come a long way in that. But at the end of the day, I, I think that there's a lot of value in being able to tell someone no and I wanted my kids to be around a different environment than what I'm seeing at public schools, in, 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 at least in our area. So, again, I don't mean to start a fight. I don't want to start a fight about it. I, I love listening to other points of view. Um, but that, those are, that's how I'm feeling and my family's feeling. And so I get to choose where I want to send my kids. And I wanted them at a private school. Didn't look like it was a possibility. But uh, one tiny conversation about the, with the private school in town, uh, my daughter already goes there, um, really sparked something huge and it grew over the course of a month into they were ready to start a program. Football and wrestling, if they had the right coach, which they, I think they thought that I was that guy. And uh, humbly, my, my wife and I decided this is, we need to do this. It's a great opportunity to get our kids, all three of our kids, in a school we believe in uh, and, and you know, give them a strong core of their Christian faith. This is something that was important to us and, and I'm going for it. And at first, as the transition happened, I, the first two weeks was just, I just want to lay low. I felt horrible for my kids at Central uh, that I felt that they were going to feel like they couldn't have known, right, my heart and where I was and why I'm taking this. And they may not even believe it if they heard it from my own mouth. Um, and, and I think that, and I'm sure there are many others, I'm sure parents and community members that thought you know, he's a liar or whatever, whatever they thought. But uh, it, it caused me to really lay low. I didn't want to. But uh, time has passed and and now I'm starting to get into building this thing. And so now here I am starting a new program, not only taking over a new job, but coaching at a place that has never had football before. So I don't have a single kid that has ever played. I don't have anybody that's ever lifted a weight. That's a true story. There's 129 kids in the school, so it's tiny. And um, it's, uh, it's going to be a long road. We've decided to... to go out on a limb and play eight-man football. And a new eight-man league is just starting, which I've been, uh, I guess, kind of 
helping out getting that league start, started here in Illinois. I think the eight-man football is a great thing for our country. And it's something as a whole I believe in. So the opportunity to get involved in it and even maybe even help get it started in Illinois was really cool and really exciting to me. And so I'm excited about building eight man. I'm practically as excited about that as I am building this new program at, well, my new school, which is known as Judah Christian School. So, so much going on and, and it's been a whirlwind of a couple months. And then beside that, as you guys know, building the online clinic. So sorry to talk so much, but uh, I hadn't seen you for a long time. And, and I guess if you don't want to hear it, you could always skip ahead in the video. But uh, as we get into this, again, the, the online clinic has been amazing. I just watched Scott Marsh's last night. I had to edit it. So I'm watching this an hour and a half long on his odd stack. It's unbelievable. These, I don't know what to tell you. These things, these, these, um, Clinic presentations are unbelievable. I, I, and I love Twitter, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do too. But you, you can only get so good by looking at diagrams of plays. And to me, that's what Twitter is. Now, guys are sharing ideas, and it's all fun, and we share fun stories, and we share ideas that we have. But there, I don't think you can replace li sitting down and listening to a man speak. Speak about his program, speak about his offense, Share his whys and just watch. Watch how a professional, how does he carry himself? How does he answer questions? How does he have, what are his answers in his offense or his defense to the if they this, then we this? How does he, all those things, I don't think, I think they're invaluable. And that, that's what I love listening to people speak. Now, traveling around to clinic after clinic is, uh, first of all, exhausting because I hate being away from home. I hate, I don't like being in hotels. Um, and, and it cost me a lot of money. And so, so the opportunity to sit and listen to these incredible coaches speak one after another, after another, after another, after another, it's invaluable. And I can't imagine how much better, even I'm not, and sometimes I learn X's and O's stuff and a little wrinkle here and a little wrinkle there. And I think, oh, that was a great little idea. I can add that, I can steal that. Mm, I don't know that that one's right for us. But at the end of the day, it's just, I'm sitting down and listening to these men, professionals, fantastic at doing what I want to do, I'm listening to them speak and I'm getting a glimpse into them, into their core. You can't do that until you sit and listen to a man speak. I just believe in it. So I'm here going on a rant about my own project. And the more I dive into this project, the more I believe in it. And I get, and I get a little frustrated because first of all, it's a really hard thing to get off the ground to get people to convince them that it might be worthwhile. Um, and I get it, you know, we all, this thing, you know, who was I to expect this thing to just be like the biggest thing on earth? But you, you know, I'm gonna stick with it because I believe in it. And at the, at the end of the day, that's what it's always been about as when I started crazy thing called Chief Pigskin back in, what was it, like 09 or 10, somewhere in there. Um, that, I believe in fantastic content, and I believe in that these guys who share it, I think they deserve something for it. Free content is nice, but you cannot, if you want a guy to really share, I think that you should give him something for it, because I think that what we do is valuable, and I think that all the work we put into it is valuable. Those are my opinions. Let's get into what this video is about. Listen, I needed to make a champion's manual. I've been thinking about, I think it started, I think the first I heard of the champion's manual was back with old Jim Tressel, right? He had put something together for his guys at Ohio State, and that's the first I heard of it. And then high school coaches started doing it, and I've always looked at it every offseason going, mm, champions, man, I want that, I want that, I want that, but am I going to, how much work am I going to put into it? How many people are going to even read this? Where am I going to get the money to print it? You know, you work at a public school, sometimes they're counting how many copies you're making. Uh, so, so there were a lot of, things that just kept me from doing it. But I finally ran into one. It was Jostis at our first, it was, he's the featured speaker at our Champagne Clinic. He talked about his champion's manual. And here's what made me finally say, uh, I'm doing that, is that he put his champion's manual on Google Drive. Genius. Put the manual on Drive, and now you share it with everyone in your program, parents, kids, and they all have access to it. And now it's a document that can change as you change, that can, can be um, updated like that. 
or you don't like page two, you can just replace page two. It, and I thought this is 100% that I can do that and I'm going to do that. So this right here, this video is about catching up with me. And you know, what have I been up to? What, what's going on? And you know, I love sharing my opinion. And then number two is about, hey, I gotta make this champion's manual. And these are the five things that I thought that these five things need to be in my champion's manual. And I think they need to be in yours if you're gonna make one, which I think you should. You should make one. This is a no-brainer thing for me. I'm really kind of ashamed to know, I'm sure most of you have already done one, that I haven't done one before. But these are the five things that, the first five things that I think, make sure these things are in there. Now I think there's gonna be way more than these five. Make sure these five are in there. And I think it's almost like these are your core and things start getting inserted in between and around before and after these as you build this thing out. And I'm gonna start building it now, this is January, and I don't expect this thing to be done until maybe March at the earliest, uh, and I've expected to grow over time. So let's talk about what needs to be in it. Number one, what I think that I think needs to be in it are player expectations. Then you talk about player rules, which I, I'm sure I have a few rules, but we don't talk very much about rules. We just talk about expectations. What are you expected to do? So player expectations have to be in there. And I don't know that in my, I used to have a huge list. It was like 30 expectations. And I've learned over the years, I think you want to shorten that list. How many, the fewest number of, of things you could itemize that down to, I think you want to. But I also don't think that you need to necessarily try to skimp. I don't think it needs to be just three. Um, but you should try to make sure it's reduced down to something that you know they're going to read. Okay? So little things in my program, expectations are always be on time. Communicate when you're going to be gone, right? These things let people know that you care. Be good to each other. Put the team in front of yourself. These are basic expectations. That they, this is what's expected of you. You know, the, what, what do we expect? You need to be here and you need to be on time because, well, you're part of a team, so that's important. And secondly, you care about it and you need to communicate that you care about it. And you, that's how you do those things. Number two thing that I think should be in your manual is motivational tools. So that's what I love about the Google slide part. You can throw in one photo. You're not wasting a whole page, a piece of paper. You can throw in one photo with a quote under it that you love or that you think represents your program or represents for us. You remember, you remember how I talked about how our defensive mantra has been piranha? I would love to have just a page on piranha. Pick an image of our piranha that we use, what piranha is, why it's important to us, right? Let's throw that slide in and motivate the kids and, and educate the family on, on what the things that we feel like are important and, and just opportunities to motivate people. So now you, I think you throw in these little motivational slides every five slides or so, and it's just like a little, you know, it's like putting an image in your blog post instead of just write text, 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 image, image, image. And that kind of a side note here, would you put a whole bunch of images in this thing? And lastly, Make sure your images are to scale or like are the right ratio. Don't put an image in there that's this big and then stretch it across to fit and everybody's faces are all wide. <laughs> Don't do that. Come on guys. Now I know you're not artists. I know I was okay, I'm not I was an art teacher. So I understand that my design sense or sensitivity to design might be higher than the average football coach, but come on. Stretched out pictures, you can do better than that. Don't stretch them out. Learn how to crop. There's free programs online. Google it. Just Google free photo editing softwares. Watch a five minute YouTube video on how to crop a photo or resize a photo. Just watch it and learn it. It's a skill and everything you make just get, gets 10 times better. Okay, side note, tell me that side note. Let's go back to the champion's manual. Number three, I think you should put goals in there all sorts of goals. Goals for strength training, goals for the team. But, you know, for me, I avoid goals like X number of yards. In our program, I don't, we don't value that. Um, but I'm thinking goals of attendance and all those things, grades, and all those things that don't really have to do with a Friday night. Those are the goals that, I, that I'm thinking of. And I think those goals should be in there. Goals and progress, especially strength training. You know, when you, we all talk about, I think we all know, how difficult is it to get kids to be consistent in their strength training? It's just an opportunity to, to put these things in front of your kids, right? Maybe you show how much progress people are making, uh, show, um, give success stories, 
right? Here's where we're trying to get to. Here's how many kids we have there already. Here's how many more we need. All those goals. That's a great opportunity in this champion's manual to put those out in front of your families and for them to be able to check it. And number four thing, I just saw this one from Coach Jostis. I, you put accountability in there. Now accountability comes down to maybe a little slide that shows how many sessions people have been to. Now if you fall to lean toward the side of saying, I don't want to show that little uh, Johnny has been at only one of 16 workouts. I feel bad for him, he's sensitive, mom and dad might get mad at me. Okay, if you fall in that category, okay, so be it. You can still throw accountability in there in this way. You're gonna put, hey, top 10 attendance winners for the month of January, right? Best 10 attendance per, in January, maybe it's per class, if you have a big program. Best top 10 seniors, top 10 juniors, top 10. And now you're giving people something to shoot for. The other reason I think you do it per month or per week is because now when it resets, and let's say I had a bad January, right? I didn't come January, but I decided on February 1st, darn it, I'm going to be committed to this football weightlifting. Well, I think that kid, you, or it's good for you to give that kid something he can shoot for, right? He's never going to pass a superstar guy, right? Your superstar who never misses. He's never going to pass him in attendance. Maybe if you just did a year-long running tally, he'd never get in. But maybe he could look at February and go, I can be in on February. And I want to see my name on that top 10 list. My parents want to see it. All those little things. You guys know these things already. But it's, you know, I believe in listening to coaches speak. And you get reminded. These little reminders are just sometimes just the little thing that we need to put in the 10 minutes of extra work that make these things happen. At least that's what I've found in my experience. And number five thing. All right, that was four. That was four. Number five thing, and I think this one's the, a huge key, is a calendar. Now you know this already, but this one kind of just broke through to me recently. And the reason a calendar goes in there is a couple reasons. Number one, because it's Google Drive, it can be edited. We thought we were gonna practice at 7.30, something came up, it's changing to 8 a.m. Whatever that is. So that's huge. But here's the biggest part of why a calendar is so crucial, is because the calendar's on there, parents and families know they have to check it. Boom, there's the calendar. They got to open it up again. And they're certain, you know, they're going to scroll through the slides and they know that the calendar is slide seven, maybe. Okay? And there's just enough slides, you know, they have to scroll through it. And now you've always got that opportunity. Maybe slide six is this always changing motivational or reminder slide. And you know that they will always see that reminder slide before slide seven. Eh? Random idea. But I think it's crucial crucial and that's why the calendar's got to be in there and that's why Google Drive is the genius, the genius way to do a champion's manual. I'm so excited. Okay, I'm going to get started on my champion's manual, dive a little bit deeper into what I'm going to throw in there for mine and how I'm getting mine started. If you want to see that, click the link below, get over to the clinic. You just need a sta standard pass to see it. Yes, that means it's free. Oh, it's still free content. But I'm going to share with you uh, how I'm starting to build this champion's manual, give you some ideas on making it look sharp. You guys that are not design savvy guys and you just throw whatever clip art you can find, can I give you some coaching points on that, please? All right. Thanks for listening, guys. Good to be back in the office. Hey, leave comments below. What else needs to be in your champion's manual? You got some ideas for me? Comment below. We'll see you guys soon. That's all I got.